Hello and welcome to Module 10, Land Security Concepts. So now we're getting into the security part, uh, portion of the course. So please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when, you're all, when we're all done. All right, so let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to talk about when we're talking about the land security specifically is the endpoint security endpoint and we're talking about the edge points the edge points are the hosts the pcs okay all right so first thing you need to write down is the following enterprise networks that means not land you know we're talking about campus lands and things like that or, or whole company lands organizations enterprise networks attacks include the distributed denial of service attacks data breaching which means uh stealing confidential data and malware so just write those down um now network security devices okay so here's what i want you to write the following down there's a vpn what is a vpn a vpn is to allow secured connection over the internet it can be integrated into the firewall if you want that number two there's the ng FW, the next generation firewall, which provides stateful packet inspections, application visibility, and control. A next generation intrusion prevention system, the NGIPS, the advanced malware protections, that's the AMP, AMP, and the UR filtering. That's a big thing. And of course, the NAC, the network access control, which includes the AAA, the authentication, authorization, and accounting. We'll discuss that later on. And the Cisco ISC, the Identity Service Engine, um, is a type of a NAC. So these are all Cisco appliances that you can purchase these. Um, so here is a typical topology where the NGFW would be placed. A VPN, you place the VPN, you know, this is going to be on the Vanguard. That's where all the data comes in. Okay, it has to be decrypted before it's passed inside. All right, so now let's talk about the endpoint protection, those devices here. How do we protect them? First thing you are going to do, write this down, antivirus slash malware. You can, okay, make sure that's installed on the hosts. Number two, you, uh, you should also install a host-based firewall. And number three, a host-based IPSs, intrusion prevention systems. All right, also you can, should include, let's write that as number four, NAC and AMP. Uh, and uh, an ESA, which stands for Email Security Appliance, and WSA, Web Security Appliance. All right, so this guy should be in there. You should have also a NAC and the ISC is in there for authentication purposes. This is for the email and the web services when the data comes in. They usually go here. They check them out before they pass them on to the, um, the users. To be authenticated, you go to the AAA to get authenticated before you are passed on to your users. But again, you should have the antivirus program running, your malware and your firewall and your host IPS also running. So that will give you a great uh, security wall. All right, so let's talk about the ESA, the Email Security Appliance. Here's what you need to know. It write all of these down right here. Block unknown threats, remediate against stealth, stealthy malware, malware that have evades, evaded initial detection. It will discard emails with bad links, block access to newly effect, infected sites, and will encrypt content in outgoing email to prevent data loss. That's something you should think about for enterprise networks. Now, the WSA which stands for the Web Security Appliance, all right? Here's what you need to write. It, um, it combines the AMP, the Advanced Malware Protection, Application Visibility and Control, Acceptable User, Policy Controlled, and Reporting, all right? Um, I think this is the note I want you to write down, right? It also provides complete control, right, the second over how users access the internet. So write that down as well. And also the WSA can perform blacklisting of URLs, URL filtering, malware scanning, 
URL categorizations, web application filtering, and encryptions and decryptions of the web traffic. All right, so that's something definitely you want to look at also as well. So definitely the uh, the ESA and WSA should be part should be an appliance separate appliances deployed in your enterprise lands. All right, now let's take a look at the access control. Well, first thing you need to do on the router or on the switch is you configure, write these down, okay? Configure a login password for the console VTY and the auxiliary ports. Okay, remember we did that before? In the, 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 I think in the previous course. So this is how you would do a Telnet password, right? In this case, 0 and 4 on the router. And this is how you would set up an SSH, right, on the router. Preferably, you want to do the SSH. Okay? Uh, when you do SSH, it's going to require you to use a username and a password, right? And when you type transport SSH, that means you can only do SSH. You cannot use Telnet. If you type SSH space Telnet, and if SSH is not available, then Telnet would be used. But since you typed only SSH here, um, then only SSH has to be used. If you don't type this command at all, then you could, de you could do either or. Lock in local. Uh, log in local means that when you send in your admin, your username, admin, and your password, it's going to be sent locally. The router has the information locally, right? You're going to be authenticated locally. You know, otherwise, you you know, you'll type in, send it to the radius server or the tacx server. But in this case, we're going to authenticate the, the username and password locally. All right. All right, the AAA. You could use the AAA. That's where you have the radius server and the um, and the tacx server, and you don't want to do the authentication locally. All right. So write this down. AAA stands for authentication authorization and accounting and you can uh, you can either a you can store store the username and password locally for small networks you do what we just did right but for bigger networks we have a lot of remote users you want to create you know if it's a server you want to have it as a server based the authentication should be not on the router it should be sent to a radius or a tacx plus server right, so please write that down Triple A would use a server-based um, authentication, such as RADIUS, that's the RADIUS, and the TACX plus, T-A-C-A-C-S plus servers. We'll cover that in a different class some other time. All right. So the authentication is to validate your name, username, and password. Authorization is to give you access, you know, after your name has been validated by the router or the server, then you are authorized to do certain things, resources, to access certain resources, for example. Uh, and then after you have, or after you've been authorized, we're going to keep track of what you have done. All right, so we can keep track of, for example, um, when you're logged in, when you're logged out, the time, you know, including username, date and time the actual command, what you did, all right? So typically you need a server to do the authentication, the authorization, and accounting. The router, you know, it's not applicable for you to do that. Although you could do it on the router too, don't get wrong. All right, the 802.1x, please write the following down. It is a standard, a standard that is port-based access control and authentication protocol. All right, the host is what I want you to write down too as well. The host cannot access the network through the switch until the switch gets the okay from the authentication server. So when you come in going through the port, because it's port based, 802x, 802.1x says, okay, wait, I need to send your information to the server. And the server will double check, me authenticate you and authorize you and say, okay, this guy's okay. And then the server will talk to the switch and will say, okay, let him in. Or lock him, don't let him in. So you will not be able to go through the port till the radius or the tactics servers tell the switch uh, to either permit you or deny you entrance. 
That's what the 802.1x is. All right? Uh, let's talk about some security threats. Layer 2 vulnerabilities. All right, so what you want to do is you want to use a VPN, a firewall, an IPS uh, to protect layers 3 to 7. But if layer 2 is attacked, then all the protection above is useless. So you can protect all of this. If somebody got their hands on your routers, on, your, on layer 1, la layer 2, at the LAN, somebody compromised the LAN, it doesn't matter if you even protect all of this, it's going to be useless. All right, remember this and write this down. Security is only as strong as the weakest link in the system. Okay, remember that. And layer 2, which is the LAN, is considered to be the weakest link. So if your LAN is connected to the Internet, that's fine. If the LAN is not secured, that's your weakest link. you got to protect that and go you know, make sure your LAN is well protected before you start going into firewalls and IPSs and, and so on, going outside to protect your stuff from the outside world. Don't start, you know, protecting yourself from the outside world, and then you have a very weak LAN. So you start with your LAN, because that's your weakest link. All right, so the switch attack category. So please write all of these down, okay? And uh, the MAC address table attacks, we're going to have to deal with that. We're going to talk about that in this chapter. And we'll talk about how to mitigate against all of these. Build a defense. Prevent these types of attacks. But for now, we're going to discuss them. So please write these down. MAC address table attack. The VLAN attack. You have to deal with that in layer 2. The DHCP attack. The ARP attack. The address spoofing attack. And the STP attack. So there's a whole bunch of different attacks that could happen in your LAN. You have to address all of them. All right, so between this chapter and the next chapter, when we're done, you should be able to have your LAN well protected against all different types of attacks, including malware and everything else. Okay, so you got to be able to do that. It is not good enough to build or design a LAN, and you are an expert on how to configure it, expand it, and maintain it, and so on, blah, 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 but you don't know how to protect it. That's not good. So you need to know how to secure and make sure that you protect against any of these attacks. All right. So switch attack mitigation techniques. So what we're going to do is I want you to write the following things. So write these down. So this is what we're going to be using to protect the, um, the LAN. So we're going to use port security. So write this down. DHCP, DHCP snooping. We're going to do the DIA. The DAIA, the dynamic ARP inspection, and we're going to do the IP source guard. And you'll see all of us, for example, snooping, we'll, we'll make sure that we're on starve the DHCP and we'll, you know, and we are not going to somebody pretend to be a DHCP, for example. All right. The dynamic ARP is going to prevent ARP snoo uh, spoofing, you know, prevent the guy in the middle attack, for example which we'll discuss later on. Uh, and we can actually have that. They double check your IP and MAC address to make sure that they came in from the right place. That's the IP source card. Port security is going to be very, very important. And you want to be able to prevent many different types of attacks. Almost anything that you're going to do in the land, you have to secure your ports. All right? And I'll tell you right now, you want to disable any ports that are open are not being used okay all right so uh okay write all of this down and please write the following down as well okay so solutions will not be effective unless the management protocols are secure so please do these always use sftp https consider out of bounds you know telnetting or sshing from outside when you're going to connect to your network Use a dedicated management VLAN like VLAN 99, all right, and only one PC connected to it. And, of course, use ACLs like a firewall, which we'll discuss later on in this, not, not in this course, maybe in the following course. All right, once you're done with all this, we'll stop right here. 
and write everything I asked you to and submit that as homework and I'll see you on the next video.